guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be testing, slash maybe reviewing, <laughs> reviewing some of it. Three different things. So I have the, the Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Skin Foundation, the Soft Glam Anastasia Beverly Hills Palette, and the uh, one of the Hourglasses Scattered Lights Glitter Eyeshadow. So if you want to see how these products work, then just keep watching. So all of these products I have used at least once before. Um, the Makeup Revolution I have used a couple of times because I realize I have dry skin and this is matte so that never really is a good combo. So I wanted to try it different ways. So I have found in order to make it work for me, I need to moisturize the crap out of my skin. So I'm going to start with by spraying the Pixi Hydrating Milky Mist. <laughs> it's almost gone. I love this stuff. I literally, I use it daily. Even if I'm not putting makeup on, I use this, so I don't have to go for more. So I normally use my Smashbox Primerizer. If you've followed me, you realize that that's like what I use. But I recently stopped buying it because I felt like I just needed to give others a chance. Um, I have tried this before and I really liked it, so I bought it again. It's a Too Faced Hangover RX Primer. This stuff is really good as well for hydrating. So I'm going to use a generous amount of that on my really, really dry areas. I'm going to use it everywhere, but I'm going to use a lot on my dry areas, which is my T-zone. So one thing I kind of noticed is for me, it does kind of emphasize pores, which I don't normally have a problem with, but I think it's because it's matte. So I'm also going to go in with the Urban Decay Optical Illusion Complexion Primer, just a tiny, tiny bit in those specific areas. So going to the foundation. So this, like I said, is the Makeup Revolution Matte Velvet Skin Foundation. When I first bought it, I got the wrong shade. Um, the shades are a problem for me. <laughs> they have a lot of shades. I'm pulling it up right now. Hold on. I took a picture. So they have 39 shades, I believe. Um, it is $38, and it is one. 0.1 fluid ounce. So my problem is, is I, so I got the absolute lightest shade because it's yellow toned and I am yellow toned even though I'm extremely fair. So I got the lightest shade, but then it was too light. <laughs> like, and I don't normally have that problem because I'm so fair. So then I went to, into the store because I ordered this all online. So then I went into the store to exchange it. Well, the next shade up is actually like my skin color, but it's not the right shade because it's too, it's, how do, I, so, I don't know how to explain that, but basically it matched my lightness, but it didn't match my shade. So like I'm yellow and this was very, very much cool toned, like you could see the pink undertone in it. But then the next shade up was yellow, but then it was too dark for me. So I just said, you know, fuck it. And I got the pink toned one, even though that's not my skin tone, but I noticed I can get it kind of matching with you know, everything else I'll put into it, but. So this is the shade R210, and it is too cool tone for me, which is weird because like when you swatch it on your hand, it, it just mostly looks neutral, but then when I put it on my face and I see it in comparison to my body, that's when I can really tell it is cool tone because my body's not. But anyways, where is, <sighs> it's clear over there. So I've noticed I don't like this with a brush. It's just too thick for me, so I am gonna use my sponge and go. So, as we do this, I'm going to read the claims. So, it is supposed to be a breathable, full coverage foundation with a lifelike matte finish that bends and breathes for skin to wear, for skin up to 24 hour wear. Ew. And it says it's supposed to be good for all skin types. I've noticed a lot of foundations say that, and that's a lie. <laughs> so, I would say this is full coverage. Um, obviously, if you use a brush, it happens faster than you would with a sponge, but it's still pretty full coverage just with the sponge. I really should have exfoliated my nose. So my nose is going to look like crap. I already know that. No amount of moisturizer or hydrating primer can do anything for my nose if I don't exfoliate it beforehand, which I didn't, so we're just going to ignore my nose. I feel like I've been so defeated. Is this turning into a get ready with me? Like, I like 
I really do like filming. The only problem is, is like the extra part that goes into it. <laughs> I hate editing. I hate it with a passion. But I love filming. What's the point of filming if you're not going to edit it to then do something with it? But oh, it's just, I hate it so much. And because of my work schedule, I feel like the only time I can really film is on the weekend. So then if I go out with like family or which family is not in town, so I go and have to stay the night, then I can't really film. And then if I do get to film, it's normally on Sunday. Well, then also on Sunday, I have to then turn around and edit because normally I have a video on a Monday, which I don't have to. I've never, I stopped saying I'm going to film on a, or upload on a specific time to you guys just because of that reason alone is I've noticed depending on, you know, life, <laughs> I don't know when I can upload. And so it's just so frustrating. And Instagram, man, don't even get me started on Instagram. I never post on there. I feel like I rarely do or unless it's like in correspondence to a video that's coming out. But I just, I don't know what it is about Instagram. I just, I don't want to be like everybody else. I don't want to edit it to the freaking crap. Like, I don't want to edit it to the point that it's hardly recognizable. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong. I do edit them. I smooth them over somewhat because I have texture. I don't want that showing. It looks gross. <laughs> um, but other than that, I mean, all I do is like, there's a feature where you can push detail and then all it does is just make it more focused on that area. I don't, I've seen some people where they like change the color of it and like, at one, I've seen them do it and I still can't figure out how to get it done. I, it just doesn't work for me. So I leave it alone. I just smooth it over and I detail it. And then I've really liked doing it where you make like the background black and white. I don't know why, it just looks so pretty to me. I'm sorry, this is a Too Faced Born This Way Multi-Sculpting Concealer in Swan. It is extremely yellow tone and even more yellow tone compared to a cool tone foundation so I'm going to add in another one so I'm gonna add in the ColourPop what is this no filter concealer in fair 04 sorry these lights reflect so it's hard to see we're gonna add that in here this is way too much concealer but ask me if I care nah. All right, I'm going to get my powder ready while this kind of bakes in a sense. Um, so I'm going to use the Hourglass Veil Translucent Setting Powder. I really do like this for my under eyes. I am not a baker. I know some people, even with dry skin bake, I just, I can never make that work. So for me, this is really good. I have heard other people say that it sucks for baking, even with dry skin. So if you like to bake, I wouldn't buy this. But if you don't and you just like to have powder put under there. I think this is really nice for dry skin. But I did notice I tried to use it with a sponge the other day because I used to do that and I stopped doing that. So I tried to use it with a sponge. Mm -mm. It has a yellow cast then, which I've never, I haven't seen that yellow cast when I just use it with like a fluffy brush. But when I used the sponge to try to pack it on, it had a yellow cast. So I wouldn't do that. <laughs> Ooh, you know what? I think I'm gonna use the hourglass all over my face. I don't normally, but it is kind of yellow tone, even though it's supposed to be translucent. So it might help with my foundation color. I'm gonna spray my face real quick with the Morphe Continuous Setting Mist, just to help block in that powder and so it's not as powdery. <laughs> And just press it in. Stupid hair. I'm just gonna go ahead and move on to my eyes now. So we're gonna use the Soft Glam Palette. And I'm just gonna toss the brush out, all right? Or it's gonna go on the floor, that's cool. Whatever. So I'm going to take the Tempura shade and I'm just gonna dust that all over my lid because I'm just, I'm not ready for that wet lid life yet. I just. I can't jump on the bandwagon yet. Alright, I'm gonna go in with the shade Orange Show Orange Soda. So we're gonna put that orange soda in the crease. And I like using a fluffy brush because I like to just disperse it everywhere and lightly. Hi. 
Sorry if your angles keep changing. My camera keeps cutting out and my stand's kind of broke, so every time I hit the record button, it moves the camera a little bit. I try to put it back, but I don't think it's going back in the right place. Anyways, let's move on. <laughs> I'm going to go in with the burnt orange shade now just to kind of give more depth. So let's take the burnt orange shade. That one is really, really heavily fallouty. Fallouty, whatever. So I'm going to put it in the same place, just a little lower, and also bringing it on the lid in the corner, just to give it more depth. And then I'm just going to go back in with the first brush just to kind of blend it together. I'm not going to add product though. Okay, next I think I'm going to go in with Sienna just to add a little bit of like that red tone. Sure, let's do it on this. Let's do it on a kind of pencil brush-ish. It's just a fluffier one. And we're going to really put that in the crease. Like the actual crease. <laughs> And then I'm going to bring it down onto the lid as well, in the outer part. And then we'll slowly bring it over when there's not really any product left on my brush. And then we go back in and blend. I'm just now going to go back to Burnt Orange and kind of build up that shade with the Sienna together. Just because I want them to be a little more intense than they are. So, now let's move on. Actually, let's do the bottom real quick while we're here. So, I need my little fluffy brush. I'm going to take burnt orange and just run that along the whole waterline. Or, pff, my whole under eye. Now, I'm going to take a smaller brush, smaller pencil brush, and go in with Sienna, the red shade. And I'm going to put that closer to my lash line. I'm going to keep that on the outer edge without adding extra product I'm going to go back in with the same brush I just used and kind of blend the two together for my eyeshadow for my lid I want to use the hourglass oh I forgot to tell you <laughs> the soft glam palette let me go back to this real quick this retails for $42 which I believe is the same as her other ones all right, now let's move on. So, the Hourglass Scattered Light Glitter Eyeshadow. Um, this retails for $29, and I have the shade Reflect. They have five shades in total, so this is more the pinky-toned one. So this is what this shade looks like. It's a very pretty pink shade. My only problem with these is how to get it out. So, like, when I was using it yesterday, let me show you if I can fine brush okay so when I was using it yesterday I like to use a brush because one if you see this pot I have nails I can't get them in there so if I use a brush let me just try to show you it like it's there but it's barely there and so like I tried building it up I tried let me show you if I spray the brush first Oh, wrong side. Now it gets both. And then I dip it in here and then paint it. Let me paint it next to it. It's slightly more intense, but it's still not intense. So I tried getting it. I can get my pinky in there, barely. But I can get the pinky. And if I put the pinky on, that's the pinky one. So if you can get your finger in here, these are really nice. <laughs> But my problem is I can't get my finger in there unless I use the pinky and then my pinky's not very stable to... Anyways. So, that is what that looks like. I will pop up a picture somewhere if I can get it to work. Um, I took a picture yesterday after I did my makeup, so I will pop that picture up here so that you can see how it worked when I just used the brush and then also used my pinky. That is what it looks like. Um, I, just for your reference, I'm going to show you that. But because of how hard this is for me to use, I'm actually going to use a liquid eyeshadow first and then put this over top because it is kind of a glitter so a glitter works better when it has something to stick to which I do have glitter glue which I didn't or glitter primer 
And I didn't realize until literally I was sitting down for this video that I realized it's called a glittered eyeshadow. So I figure it'll probably work best with glitter, glue, or something to stick to. So I'm going to use this. It is the Supernova, uh, bleh, Supernova Shadow from Kathleen Lights and ColourPop in the shade Constellation. And we're going to use this first and then put that over it. So I noticed when using this, this stuff has, oh, this stuff has glitter in it, but not every swipe can you get the glitter. I don't know why it's like that. So that's why I was hoping putting that on top would help it be better. I mean, it's still nice and it's still like reflective. It's just not an in your face if you can't get the glitter. All right, so now let's go in with the hourglass and I am gonna try to use my pinky. So I have it on my finger and see how pretty it looks? It is, oh, oh. On top of this is looking really pretty because they're pretty much the same color, honestly. I might have been too slow on that one, kind of started drying, but that's okay. I still think it's really pretty. For $29, I don't think they're worth it for me just because I can't get my fingers in there and they don't really look good with a brush, even wet. So obviously, I'm going to use this. I like it. It's just difficult for me, so I wouldn't go out and buy another shade. If you don't have nails, then they are really pretty with using your fingers, so I guess it's your preference on <laughs> if you have nails or not. That's really weird. Okay, let's move on. All right, let's move on. I'm just going to go finish my face. I'm going to finish my eyebrows, and we'll be back. Now that my face is done, let's talk products. Actually, first, let me tell you what I am wearing. Um, so for bronzer, I have the Marc Jacobs Tantastic. And then for blush, I have the Real Her. It's their kit. And then it's the shade Ugh. Unstoppable. And then for highlighter, I went back to an older one, an Anastasia Nicole Guerrero. And I kind of have a mixture of the gold, the pink, and the white. Kind of went a little crazy. Um, and then for lips, I have the L'Oreal Infallible in the shade Spicy Blush. Oh, and then eyebrows is BH Cosmetics Shape and Define Brow Duo and the NYX Mascara, or Tinted Brow Mascara. <laughs> Whatever. So, my thoughts, my thoughts, my thoughts, my thoughts. So, the Anastasia Soft Glam I think is really similar to the Modern Renaissance. So, I feel like if you have Modern Renaissance, there's not really a point in buying this. For me, though, my ro Modern Renaissance is running out, so I figured. Why not try the new one, even though they're pretty similar. So there are obviously a couple of different shades, but they are very similar. So you can get close to the same looks, but it does blend out really nicely. The quality is really good. Um, the Hourglass Scattered Lights, I pretty much already told you. I feel like if you don't have nails, it's worth it. If you have nails, there's it's not worth it because it's too hard to get it out. For foundation, um, this for me. For dry skin, I feel like you obviously have to really hydrate your skin because this is a matte foundation. Should have it out, right? It is a matte foundation, and so you really have to hydrate your skin. But even, at least for me, even hydrating my skin, this only lasts maybe three hours, and then it's just, it's starting to look really bad, especially around my nose. It's just in my dry areas. The rest of my face doesn't normally look that bad with this. Um, I love that it's full coverage. I'll still probably use it. I'll just probably mix it with other foundations that are more hydrating because I do really like the coverage. I love that it's full coverage and it does. It looks really nice at first. <laughs> yeah, it's already starting to do what it does with my dry patches. So it isn't a very long wearing for dry skin. I mean, it does. It stays on. Don't get me wrong. It just doesn't look good long wearing. So yeah. That is all I have for this video, so thank you for watching, and I will see you in my next one.